Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rokakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yashar Allah. And a sincere salutation to all Yoakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Baha Shem is in the name, Raka is spirit, Kodash is holy, Akyam is brothers, Akwath is sisters, Shalawan means peace, and Yashar Allah is Israel in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. All right, now I want to go into a lesson through the spirit, all right, on, you know, the world is, as we get closer to the end, you're starting to find out that the world don't love the Heavenly Father like they say they do. You know, people are more infatuated with their imagination of the Heavenly Father as opposed to thus saith the Lord. So let's start here. This is John chapter 7 and verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this is why when you deal with Christianity, you don't see rivers of living water because they don't have the the, the correct depiction of the one they ignorantly call Jesus or the one they ignorantly call God. They cherry pick scriptures. They find scriptures that 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 uh, reinforces their narrative. All right. And they push that as the image of the Heavenly Father. And then they reject everything else. And that's exactly what you see. That's this is why they demonize the law, statutes and commandments. All right. This is why they demonize a lot of things that are in the scriptures saying that the Lord changed his mind. All right. But the Lord is not fickle like people. All right. Real, real quick. This is Malachi three and six. For I'm the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So even when you deal with the law and great. All right. The Lord doesn't change. His mind didn't change concerning those laws. Even amongst the circumcision, you have those who. Very subtly. They take away certain things that offend them. As if there's anything to be ashamed of concerning the counsel of the Heavenly Father. All right. This is why the scriptures say many offenses shall come. Many shall be offended. All right. Why is that? Because, again, the narrative that Christianity has pushed is not biblical. So people have the wrong impression of the one they ignorantly call God. They think the Lord is just some all encompassing, all accepting, any type of lifestyle type of, of power. And that's just not reality. When they hear certain things, they get offended and they say, not my God, even though they're reading the same book. And it's because people are more infatuated all right, with their imagination of the Heavenly Father and not as the scriptures say. Because the things that we read are from the Heavenly Father. These are the mind. This is the mind of the Heavenly Father revealed through scripture. All right. This is John chapter 17. And nine. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. All right. And ultimately, this is why we're not supposed to lean upon our own understanding. When you see something. All right. Proverbs four and seven reads. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So we're supposed to read these scriptures and understand who the heavenly father is according to what he's revealed unto us. And we're supposed to accept those things, even if they may offend you in the, in the flesh based on your lifestyle, based on how you were raised. And this is why Apostle Apostle uh, Tahar in particular always talks about, you know, we've been in the West too long. You know, we've been westernized to a degree. And that's why Jake has this mindset when they see certain things, they get offended, not realizing this is the counsel of the one they ignorantly call God. All right. And you can't reject it. You have to eat the whole roll. You know, this reminds me of uh, something uh, Isaiah says all, all the time. You know, eating the whole roll, part of eating the whole roll is accepting everything that comes with the mind of the Heavenly Father and understanding that if there's anything that offends, it's a you problem. Matter of fact, let's go here. This is Isaiah chapter 55, and I want to jump down to verse 6. No, you know what? Let's go here. Let's get the point. Isaiah 55 and 8 reads, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So when you see something, that's why, you know, a lot of people, when they talk about the Heavenly Father, they speak from the mindset of Esau. Esau's a proud man. And what I mean by that is whenever they hear something that offends them or something they can't deal with, they dismiss it. And that's pride, really, when you think about it, because that's basically saying your mind is a better discerner of right and wrong than the Heavenly Father. It's a proud mindset when you sit back and look at it. Even those who acknowledge that the Heavenly Father exists, they don't acknowledge that he exists according to the scriptures. It's according to their own mindset of what they believe the Lord is willing to accept and what, he will, what he's not willing to accept. So they ignore the scriptures to, uh, to carry their own vain opinion, man. And the scriptures talk about that. All right, there's Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And I'm going to jump down to verse 24 says, for many are deceived by their own vain opinion and an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. The Lord left the records here for everybody to see. Everybody can see the records. This is why when the men of the Lord, beginning with our apostles on down, speak on the things that offend this world, but are in the scriptures, nobody's at fault. I mean, nobody's uh, without uh, excuse. Nobody has an excuse at this point. Because the mind of the Lord that's revealed in the scriptures has been let loose for all the world to see. And what you find out is that people are offended at the actual mind of the Lord. Even if they acknowledge that the Heavenly Father exists, they are offended at the one who made them, bro. When you really sit back and think about it, they hear certain things and they're like, no, nah, that ain't right. I don't I don't know. Why would he do? The scriptures say the Lord's ways and your ways are completely different so there are certain things that are beyond human comprehension and see the pride of esau that's in these people and it's evident is that they believe that they can somehow rationalize with the lord that they can pick and choose what they accept concerning the heavenly father man as if the lord is wrong as if his counsel is off you know brothers get passionate about it because again you look at the condition of the world and the audacity that people have to think that they know better than the one that made them. This is why they will not be pardoned, man. All right, it's Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 30. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. There's no counsel against the Lord, man. And even when you look at this present world, everything that they went against concerning the scriptures has failed. Every law that they've come up with that's adverse to the scriptures has failed. And look at, yet you still have the same pride in these people to believe that they know better than the one that made them, man. And this is why they're not going to be pardoned for what they're doing in the earth. All right, this is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 13 and 1. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of Yahweh by Shema Shai, and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. Neither by considering the works that they acknowledge the work master. So they'll look at all the works of the Lord and say that those things are beautiful. But then when they hear the counsel of the Lord dealing with humanity, they get offended. Everything that the world needs. All right. Everything that, that the world. How should I say this? A perfect example is Esau. He makes these airplanes. They're based on nature. Aerodynamics is based on how birds fly. They didn't come up with that on their own. They had to borrow from the understanding of the Lord. Yet when it comes to the counsel of the Lord dealing with humanity and hierarchy and preference, they get offended. And this is something you notice in Christianity. They take the preference from the Heavenly Father and they take the judgments away. So they'll say, yes, the Heavenly Father exists. But then they'll say, nah, he don't have a, a chosen people no more. He changed his mind on that. Now, nah, he was going to judge these nations like this, but now it's just all believers and non-believers. As if the Lord is like people, as if he just on a whim just changes his mind. This in itself shows that I, we have no idea. Most people have no idea who they're dealing with. And the ones who do know through the spirit, we only know in part. Now, what's been re revealed, we have 100 percent of that. But even though, as the scriptures say, greater works than these are hid. Meaning there are things that are just beyond 
your mental capacity, your rationality, your comprehension. There are things that are beyond that concerning the Heavenly Father. And this is why the Lord told us not to lean upon our own understanding. Let's get that. This is Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. We're not supposed to lean on our own understanding. We're not supposed to think that we know better than the Heavenly Father. And this is why the world, the scriptures say that the world would be offended. The script, let's give you examples, right? The Lord said that if a woman, all right, is on her cycle, all right, let's get the law real quick. This is Leviticus chapter 15 and 19. And if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. Now, women, they hear that and get offended. But then when you deal, you know, we were watching the video earlier today through the spirit. When you deal with the actual science, you find out that women go through certain hormonal changes during their cycle. And that it's best that they not be a they not have to interact with their uh, significant other, so to speak. Now, there are probably deeper things as a reasoning than that, but that's just one of many examples. Pork, not eating pork. The world is offended at that. As small and insignificant as it is, it shows you the open rebellion of people because they believe they know better than the Heavenly Father. And as a result, our people suffer from gout and many other health complications as a result of being rebellious, of believing you know better than the one that made you. And that's why we say through the Spirit, the world don't love the Heavenly Father. They love their imagination of Him. Even though He's revealed His own preferences, the things that are pleasing to Him, the things that are not pleasing to Him, have been revealed. Let's go here. There's Baruch chapter 4. And four, O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to Yahweh by Shemel Shai are made known unto us. And this is why the Lord is going to start at his house, because what's pleasing to the Heavenly Father was first revealed unto us. The law, statutes, and commandments weren't given to any other nation of people outside of Israel. So we have a different responsibility. We have a higher standard to live up to. But when you look at how two thirds of our people and the rest of the world look at the scriptures, they think they know better than the Lord. They'll try to dismiss this as another book in mythology. But let's go here. Deuteronomy chapter four. And five, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord, my power commanded me that you should do so in the land where the ego to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. And I bring this out because think about it, right? People will say, you know, when you deal with the law of uh, Hammurabi, there are certain laws that are in common with the laws that the Lord gave us. But not all statutes are found in other books. All these law statutes and commandments are found in one book. When you deal with uh, the, the um, seven day after seven years, all right, the debt, land Sabbath, the dietary law. There are many examples of things that are only found in our records that reveal the counsel of the Lord before science could ever reveal it. A child being circumcised. Let's get this. Because I want to bring out some examples that show that the world don't love the Heavenly Father as he is, man. They, they love their imagination. They, that's why people say, you'll notice people will say, not my God, right? And what that is, it's a telltale sign that it's not how it's written. It's how they see it. It's not how the Lord actually is. It's how they imagine him to be which are two completely different standards. Because if all you have to do is keep up the standard of your imagination, then you've lowered the bar. And that's exactly what Christianity has done. But it doesn't change the mind of the Heavenly Father. The Lord's mind is still the Lord's mind. Now, I want to get this, for example, right?
So this is Leviticus chapter 12 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Now, I want to bring this out. This is just one of many examples, right? Because it shows the, the, it shows the high intellect of the one they ignorantly call God and how the world rejects that intellect. Because that's ultimately what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people who ultimately think they're smarter than the Heavenly Father. And by process of elimination, they reduce the Lord to a personal, a spiritual personal assistant. Instead of the one who actually governs everything. It's, it's crazy how they limit the Heavenly Father. It's offensive, man, honestly. You know, speaking as a man, it's offensive that the one who created everything with great intelligence and brilliance, that people get to pick and choose or try to pick and choose what came from the Lord and what didn't when it comes to his records. So bear with me. I want to bring this article out real quick. So this is evidenceforthebible.com, all right? And it says, I'm going to just read this paragraph. It says, if vitamin K is not present when a baby boy is circumcised, the baby will bleed to death. The reason why Yahweh established day eight for circumcision is that vitamin K peaks in a newborn at eight days of age. Now, the Lord told us this before this was even a thing. Before this was, before science could point out vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin A, the Lord had already told us what to do and how to do it. He had already given us a counsel that has transcended time. Think about that. The law, statutes, and commandments are not outdated. Contrary to what Christianity and the rest of the world say, the counsel of the Lord is not outdated. This is proof. Now that they're able to see vitamins different things now they're able to see that the blood coagulates easier all right in an infant all right on the eighth day the lord didn't give us all those details he just told us to trust him and give and he gave us his counsel and we were supposed to be obedient unto it and this is why deuteronomy the fourth chapter says this is our wisdom in the sight of the nations because now in 2023 they can see why that makes sense but the lord told us just to do it now, the average person will hear that and say, oh, that's that's intelligent. But then they'll hear something else like Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter and get offended as if the Lord don't know what he's doing, man. And this is why only the remnant have worshipped the heavenly father as he is, as he's depicted, as he's revealed in the scriptures. Not according to their own mind, only the elect and the Lord gave. The elect the spirit to do so lord will we be a part of that number but only the elect have been given the ability to worship the heavenly father as he is man according to his preference according to what he's established not according to our own mind real quick this is romans chapter 10 and i'll start at verse 1 Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to you, Yahweh Bashimah Shai for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh Bashimah Shai, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of Yahweh Bashimah Shai's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh Bashimah Shai. And that's what it ultimately boils down to. They're not submitting themselves to the will of the Heavenly Father. They're not submitting themselves to the righteousness of Yahweh Shimao Shai. 